Hello, London. This is New York calling you. This is Bob Trout calling H.D. Kaltenborn in London. New York calling London. Mr. Kaltenborn, if you can hear us, we are ready for you now. And here we are. We've been waiting for your call, and by one of those peripatetics that occasionally occur in even the best regulated radio, we've been hearing a raucous German voice for the last minute while you have been waiting for a less raucous one from London. We understand that you know all about the further meeting of the cabinet that is to take place at noon tomorrow, that you have heard that Mr. Neville Henderson, who has been here attending every cabinet meeting that has taken place for the last two days, is to fly back to Berlin tomorrow with Britain's answer to Adolf Hitler's demands. Mr. Neville Henderson will remain for the further cabinet meeting, which is to take place at noon tomorrow, but a reasonable guess would be that since he has attended all the previous meetings, and since this further meeting undoubtedly is to give some further consideration to the reply and its implications, one would guess that it is probable that he will remain until after that meeting. The cabinet here has issued an official communique announcing what I have just told you, and then added a phrase to the effect that the publication of the details of Adolf Hitler's demands is, quote, entirely unauthorized and inaccurate. Now I understand that you in New York have had certain details with reference to those demands, that you have been given to understand that Adolf Hitler's demands as presented and discussed by the British cabinet include four separate items. And I should like to consider briefly with you those items. First, the return immediately to Germany of Poland's Polish corridor and of the city of Danzig and the territory which has been included in the free state of Danzig under the League of Nations Constitution. That is point number one. Well, that, I think, is a reasonable point from Herr Hitler's point of view. After all, he has insisted that he must have done sick, and his first demand was only for a road through the corridor. But those of us who studied that demand realized that that, as he put it, really meant cutting the corridor off from Polish control and making it almost inevitable that the corridor should sooner or later to Germany, at least in good part. So this is what he asked of Poland several months ago, and of course, in addition, an outright demand for the session of the corridor. Now, that I should say it is reasonable to assume I don't think they would ask. Then, after making that demand, he proceeds in the second point that has been suggested as included in what he has asked, that he would be willing to participate in an international conference that would discuss disarmament and colonies. Disarmament in the sense that Germany would be willing to reduce her armaments if other countries would do likewise. To discuss colonies in the sense that Germany would be getting some colonies from somebody who was willing to give them up to her. Then the third point, an international conference which would discuss these points would, in Mr. Hitler's opinion, last a long time. Therefore, with Polish claims, that is the claim for Danzig and for the corridor, those claims would be have to, say, uh, be, have to be satisfied before this international conference took place. And then finally, the fourth part, of his presentation to the British cabinet is supposed to have been an assurance of German British, British friendship as being natural and traditional and as responding to the desires of the two peoples. Well, I've talked briefly about the naturalness of demand number one for the corridor in Danzig. Now, secondly, as to the international conference, well, Hitler has never indicated that he has any preference for international conferences or any desire for them. Nor has he indicated at any time 
that he is willing or eager to discuss the method of reducing armaments.